Good afternoon, it's 1 p.m., six hours to go before polls close in party primaries across the country, but in some areas, polling is yet to begin. We'll tell you where shortly, plus get the latest live updates. I'm Hussein Mohammed. The special coverage of the party primaries continues. We cross over now live to the Jubilee Party headquarters, where the party secretary general is addressing the media. To the Kirinyaga County, uh, we'd just like to clarify that we detected an issue in uh, Mwea constituency, Tebere Ward, where there was a shortage of uh, ballot papers specifically for that ward. We were able to react very quickly when this information came from the ground. Extra ballot papers for up to and including the Office of Governor and the ward documents have already been flown and in the next one hour these will all be on the ground and the voting process is continuing. So they are voting using the materials that were already there. The extra voting papers will be in the air and on the ground within an hour. Also relating to Kibinyaga County, Gishugu constituency Kabere ward, the MCA ballot was printed in a format that excluded out of, I think, the 19 candidates, one name got chopped off in the print. And we've managed to do a reprint, including all the candidates. Now, this reprint also will be in the same chopper and will be on the ground within the hour. So that voting process will continue. The ward elections, of course, were suspended given the missing name. And this anomaly has been rectified and they will be on the ground. Uh, moving on to Sotik constituency, Kapletundo Ward, there were no ballot papers for the MCA position. This was rectified this morning. A chopper was dispatched. I'm told it has arrived. The voting material is on the ground and the process is actually underway as I speak to you. In short, what we are doing is continuing to monitor this exercise for any hitches caused by human error very, very closely and we are implementing rectification and improvement measures in real time so that nothing compromises the will or the expression of the will of the people. We are also deploying every resource available as to meet our commitment to deliver a free, fair and credible election. Having said that, we are, wish to thank all the aspirants. We had their full cooperation this morning. We were receiving information from them and their agents everywhere that they detected a hitch and I wish to thank particularly the Jubilee aspirants in these affected areas for bringing these items to our notice, for controlling the situation on the ground and for cooperating with the party to deliver the remedial measures in good time and we will continue to do so. I wish to also urge our presiding officers and returning officers and remind them all to adhere strictly to the party code of conduct without exception, without exception at all. If everybody else has worked very hard to deliver a credible election and an aspirant or an RO or a PO subverts the process, this will be taken very, very sternly. Having said that, looking at the five counties where this process is underway today, I wish to say that we are very, very encouraged with what we've seen on the ground. We are very encouraged with the progress that's being made. And we thank all parties for holding hands together to move the Jubilee Party forward in these counties. Thank you. Sorry? <laughs> Don't get excited. <laughs> that is Tuju's job. <laughs> no. Okay, fine. Yeah. Now we'll, we'll take a yeah. few questions yeah. uh, if there are questions to be asked. If there are no questions, thank you very much. It's lunchtime. Okay, no questions. Okay, no, questions, please. No, I'll, 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 I'll summarize. I'll summarize. Okay. What are you planning to close? Because last time you said you really want to go past the dark hour. Yes. 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 Uh, we don't want um, the voting to, to, to go past dark. Uh, that we, we want to be consistent on that one. Uh, but um, if somebody is already on the line, somebody is on your line by 5 o'clock, we will not stop them from continuing to vote. Yes? And, and um, well, I think that's a logistical issue. Um, we are 
committing enough resources to deal with the emergencies that we are, we are having. I don't think we're in the business of uh, giving the numbers of the choppers that we have on standby. We have sufficient um, resources to deal with that. I know the spin that we'd like to, to give it. Yes? The choppers are hired on an as-need basis. Yes. You don't just keep choppers in a store. Yeah, there were eight that time, but yes. now we are, not saying, we, are there. Uh, we, we are doing a, we are doing a lot on the, uh, on the ground to make sure that uh, where there are issues, we are dealing with it. Yes. Yes. Come again. Uh, the deputy president is the deputy party leader. And uh, it's quite uh, a joy to us that he is with us, standing with us in this particular uh, challenging uh, process. And his being around helps us to consult very, very quickly and move on with the process that we're going ahead with. Um, I think that's a question that the Deputy President can answer for himself. I cannot tell how long he's going to be around. Yes. Yes? Any more questions? No questions. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Right, and that is the latest uh, from the Jubilee Party Headquarters. We'll, we'll be joining Jackie Maribe uh, shortly from uh, the Jubilee Party Headquarters. But she have heard what has been said by the Secretary General, Party Secretary General, and also the Party uh, National Elections Board Chair, uh, that is Andrew Musangi, who says uh, they detected shortage of ballot papers in Embu, and ballots have been flown there. Uh, he's also saying there's a ward in Kirinyaga where they reprinted papers because of a missing the, uh, uh, the missing name of an NCA. In uh, Tuju says, uh, as long as a voter is on the queue at 5 p.m., they should vote because there have been concerns about the delay in some areas, including Nandi, and Sylvia Chebet will be telling us more from Nandi uh, shortly. But this is what we know so far about the nomination exercise today. In Kirinyaga County, uh, of course, there's a Jubilee Party nomination going there. The process has been off to a slow start since this morning. Uh, voting was stopped in some areas, and that is what uh, the party uh, uh, officials were just addressing. The returning officer was arrested with the ballot papers there. And uh, party headquarters say more materials are en route, and that is what they've said. They've been uh, taken there via chopper. In Baringo County, the process is underway. Ballot materials also delayed. Uh, in some areas of Baringo County. I uh, will be talking to Wilkista Nyabwa shortly uh, from uh, Baringo with more. In Bomet County, concern over fake ballot papers, pre marked ballot papers were found in Bomet uh, East. That is, Stephen Leto is there and will be telling us more uh, about that. There have been concerns there, although some are saying that those ballot papers were those of Friday when the uh, nomination exercise was cancelled. In Elgeo Marocred County, the process is under wheels. Uh, we'll be joining later. We'll be joining Masik and the with more from that county uh, shortly. In Nandi County, the exercise started late. Uh, they've also been concerned about concerns about the voter register. We'll be getting the latest from there. Silver Chebet will tell us more. All those counties, of course, that I've talked about, Jubilee party nominations are being held in those counties. Now, the ODM party counties uh, nominations are being held in Migori County. Process has also been off to a slow start there. Key aspirants have already cast their votes. Uriri returning officer is being held by police. Uh, it's one of the counties that has been marked as hotspots. We'll be telling you more about that coming from the Interior Ministry. In Homer Bay County, nomination exercise has also been delayed. Uh, in most constituencies, the exercise is yet to begin, as Sam Ogina will be telling us shortly. Uh, there's also heavy presence of police in the county. One of the counties, again, uh, 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 that the, the national uh, or the interior ministry has flagged as a hotspot. And the party of ODM says they're sorting out poll materials and the mess uh, surrounding the issue of poll materials. In CIA, uh, the process was cancelled this morning. Hassan Mugambi is there. Uh, polling materials, of course, did not arrive on time. Aspirants are citing frustration over the delay. Uh, and the exercise will now be, uh, uh, the nomination will be held on Tuesday. In Kisumu County, there was also a cancellation of a lack of preparedness, but it says the exercise moved to uh, Tuesday. We'll be joining Francis Gashuri uh, shortly uh, in Kisumu County. Aspirants are concerned, and the latest we are actually getting is that there are concerns that this could be uh, pushed to, to um, Wednesday. Right, and we...
Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Kayseri, as we've told you, has warned against violence in the uh, political party nominations. Kayseri has flagged seven counties where authorities say poll chaos could break out. Uh, they include Nakuru, Kiambu, uh, Muranga, Homa Bay, Mombasa, Migori, and Busia. And the government is warning that stern action will be taken against anyone that will be involved in the poll uh, chaos. Yes that any person found taking the law into their own hands will be dealt with in accordance with the law. The incident, this includes misuse of firearms by aspirants and their bodyguards as has been witnessed in some counties. We have also witnessed situations where some politicians and their supporters have engaged in acts of violence, destroying properties, and creating disturbance in polling stations. Politically instigated violence has been witnessed in Homape, Kisi, Migori, Kisumu, Usia, Unkoma, Muranga, Kiambu, Nakuru, Kajado, Empu, and Mambasa, just to name. To name a few. Action is being taken against those responsible for electoral violence and indeed among others 17 suspects are appearing in court in Migori court now while in Nakuru County a parliamentary aspirant and three of his supporters were arrested in position of crude weapons and will be arraigned in court. In other counties it has been reported that there were clear plans to rig some aspirants by compromising returning officers and police officers providing security in polling stations. The government is resolute in dealing with this and we shall be consulting with IEBC with a view to having those candidates who will be found culpable of such malpractice disqualified. Right, that is the latest uh, from uh, the Interior Cabinet Secretary uh, Joseph Nkaiseri. Cross over now to the Nyanza region where ODM primaries are being held. Samgitu, Queen Migori County, Hassan Mugambe in Siaya County, and Samogina in Homobe County. I'll start with Samgitu. Good afternoon. Uh, we, uh, we gather that Uriri Constituency Retiring Officer uh, is being held at the Uriri Police Station for suspicion. He's holding uh, ballot paper, Sam. Good afternoon, Hussein. Yes, as you said, the Uriri returning officer by the name Eric Awachi was being held here at uh, the Uriri police station. That is where we are. And on suspicion that he, had in he was in possession of 2,500 ballot papers, that is the confirmation that we've gotten from the officer in charge of CID, that is the Directorate, Directorate of Criminal Investigations by the name Bernard Keegan. He says that uh, the returning officer was intercepted while he was uh, moving towards another ward to go and, to go and supply those, those ballot papers. But uh, he has been defending himself that uh, he was just going about his business. It was at, at about 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, but uh, what we understand is that um, the police have released him, or rather they are still... They still have him in custody. They have escorted him to go and uh, take those ballot papers, the 2,500 of them, uh, to two wards within Uriri constituency because there were complaints uh, that uh, there was some shortage of the ballot papers in those two wards. People saying that uh, the voting has been happening, but um, the papers are not enough. People are still in, o o on the queue. They have not gotten that opportunity to go and cast their ballot. And so the decision that has been reached here by the police officers, the CID officers, is that uh, he'll be taken to deliver those ballot papers to the respective Words, or rather the respective polling stations to the respective presiding officers but then again he will still be detained by the police so that he can provide information the investigations continue because essentially what should happen Hussein is that uh, the papers that are being uh, submitted or rather the distributed to the uh, polling stations uh, should be in the company of the presiding officer alongside accompanied by security officer so how then does he explain himself being in possession of ballot papers and going to supply them to polling stations which seems an irregularity but of course that is something that will be interrogated another thing that we have noticed uh, this morning Hussein as the polling began uh, 
some, some, most of the stations were late. Uh, the earliest began at about 6.30. Some of them were late to the extent of uh, starting uh, past 8 o'clock. But uh, the process has been going on properly or rather smoothly uh, with some of the aspirants coming out and casting their ballots, including Governor Kothobado, his uh, opponent, Ochilo Ayako, the former minister, uh, get in to say that they are looking forward to the end of this exercise in a peaceful manner so that uh, the, the votes are tallied eventually to determine who becomes the flag bearer for the different positions. But also something that has been essential that we've been looking at is in terms of the management of the entire process because you remember that there has been issues of violence, uh, the, the chaotic scenes, the, like you have the cabinet secretary, the cabinet secretary indicating that there are some people who are uh, being arraigned today. So the, the, this is just coming from the past events that we have experienced here in Migori County. But now the understanding is that uh, the focus, all the focus is on ensuring that this voting continues smoothly uh, to the extent that they are able to close polls at the right time and get to determine who becomes the winner and who carries the day, Hussein. Right. Sam, how many polling stations are we talking about here? How many polling stations? Uh, are affected and would you know the numbers of people affected now? What does, it, does that mean for them? Are they going to vote when? Well, if we talk about the polling stations, across the county, Migori County, there are 597 polling stations. But what we understand, we do not have the, co the, the specific figure of how many uh, stations have been affected in terms of scarcity of the ballot papers. But, uh, uh, for instance, Rapogi Primary School, which is the polling station where Governor Kotobad uh, cast his ballot uh, this morning, we got to understand from the presiding officer there as soon as he was beginning the process at about 8 o'clock, he said that uh, he has a population, a voter population of 1,400. At that instance, he only had 700 ballot papers, and the understanding, the communication from the county office, the county officials of ODM was that they were going to supply extra ballot papers to them. But now coming back to Uriri constituency, th th there's no specific number of polling stations uh, that, that, are have, that have that scarcity, only that we've been told uh, two, um, two wards within, within Uriri constituency which have been facing that ca kind of shortage. And essentially this is coming from the aspirants coming to complain that... Uh, they are facing that challenge, but then again they are able to intercept, or rather intercepting courts, because you do not have the, 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 the final ruling of what this is, uh, get into it to, to, fi to find the returning officer in possession of those 2,500 uh, ballot papers, Hussein. Right, Sam, uh, you've been in Migori for a few days now, since Friday, I believe, last week. Right now, uh, the, the Interior Cabinet Secretary has just flagged Migori County as one of the areas that could, be, could have possible chaos. And of course, it's warning anyone against uh, engaging in poll chaos. What is the feeling on the ground? How has it been for you? Well, talking about today, the polling day, we have not seen incidences of people f feeling as if they want to be violent. We've not seen uh, that, um, I don't know what to call it, that spirit of violence. We haven't seen it yet. But what you've seen is enthusiasm, especially when it comes to people supporting uh, their supporters. Because, for instance, at the, at the polling station of Rapogi uh, Primary School, where the Governor Okoto Bado votes, there was uh, some sort of excitement getting to come and support the Governor, which it seems like he is um, a stronghold because that is his home county, uh, or rather his home, his home constituency. And also, he says the school that he went to school. So there was some sort of enthusiasm. Then going to Sarah Primary School, wh where uh, where Sare, Sare rather, Sare Primary School, where Ochilo Ayako cast his ballot in the morning, there was similar excitement, uh, but of course you cannot call that violence. We are hoping that it will not turn into that, uh, but uh, the feeling here is that um, so far so good, unless now things turn or decide to turn differently, bearing in mind that there's a very crucial step that is uh, coming in the evening in terms of the cl closing of the polling stations, getting to count the ballots, and also relaying the results, the respective uh, tiling stations, tiling centers, that is at the constituency level and at the county level, so that excitement we'll, we'll be expecting to see how it pans out and also how the losers are able to accept defeat. But uh, most importantly, Hussein, what you've seen, what you, the information, the communication you've received from the aspirants, especially the governorship, the top two, that is uh, Governor Kodobado and the aspirant, Ochilo Ayako, they are saying that, uh, for instance, yesterday, uh, Okotobaro indicated that he was willing to accept the results. And he, he said as much this morning that uh, as long as the process is free and fair and credible, he is willing to accept the results. And that has been said by the aspirant, the, the other aspirant, Ochilo Ayako, uh, hoping that that plus and the aspirants, or rather the supporters, uh, can be wooed to accepting that kind of message and ensure that that happens so that uh, they do not get to the situation as uh, the cabinet secretary is saying that Migori is one county to watch in these nominations and also the political activity. Right, okay. Sam, Sam Gitoku, thank you so much. We'll be joining, uh, we'll talking to you later and we hope, of course, yes, it's been flagged as a, 
a possible area where poll chaos could break out, but we hope uh, nothing of that sort happens uh, in that county. Let's go over now to the Orange uh, Democratic Party headquarters in Nairobi. There seems to be uh, concerns there where Patrick Igunza is standing by. Right, uh, we, we don't seem to have sound uh, at the Orange, uh, Orange Party uh, headquarters uh, in Nairobi. Right, let's go over now to Homerby County. Sam Ogina uh, is standing by there. Sam, good afternoon. The last we checked, that was, I think, an hour ago. Delays meant even the current governor there, Sipkana uh, did not vote by midday today. Has anything changed? Uh, well, we're saying it's seven hours and, uh, and counting, and as you rightly put it, uh, the governor, the recipient, uh, which has not cast its ballot. We're actually coming to you live from Mawego Mixed Primary School in Karachonyo Sub-County, Homa Bay County, and this is where the governor is supposed to cast his ballot, but as at one, nearly 1.30, nothing is happening. Uh, the number of uh, individuals who had uh, shown up earlier here today uh, has actually subsided. People coming and leaving uh, already disappointed, disappointed by the whole exercise here. I uh, remember that uh, uh, at least uh, three counties elections yet to or rather the nominations exercise yet to kick off and that is in Bita uh, constituency Karachuonyo which is where I'm coming to you live from and also I, I hear or rather receiving reports that in Kasipul uh, even the distribution of polling materials, materials from the, uh, from the uh, distribution center is yet to take place because they are still awaiting uh, for the arrival of a contingent of security officers uh, to be able to uh, uh, escort the polling materials to various uh, polling uh, stations and they are waiting for that backup to come from the adjacent Nyamira County. So the confusion here really surpasses the levels that we saw in Busia and, uh, and Kakamega counties. Uh, it's seven hours and counting. Nothing much has happened uh, in here in uh, Karachonyo sub-county where the governor is supposed to cast his ballot and uh, we are being told that uh, uh, the last uh, batch of uh, polling, uh, polling materials uh, to be distributed left in the distribution center at around 12 30, but uh, given the vast and even the uh, terrain of uh, this uh, whole county, uh, then that means uh, uh, the level, uh, or rather, uh, the process will actually be delayed uh, longer. But then again, it raises uh, the question of will uh, the election officials actually uh, now extend the voting hours, uh, given that we've lost at least seven man hours in this whole exercise? Uh, what we are hearing is. Uh, by 5 p.m., whoever will be on the line, uh, then they will be allowed to cast their ballot uh, before uh, the whole excess of vote counting and tiling uh, uh, kicks off. And then, uh, maybe, let me uh, take you through some of the complexities and uh, logistical challenges that uh, have been experienced here in uh, Homer Bay County. In Mbita constituency, we are told there was a settlement when uh, uh, the provincial administration allegedly uh, tried to infiltrate the process to take charge of the process and I uh, went to Kisi County uh, to, to actually uh, collect uh, the voting materials for that matter uh, with a letter purporting that uh, candidates in the Bita constituency had resolved uh, to appoint a new returning officer. Remember that returning officers are only an, uh, appointed by uh, the National Elections Board. So they went there with the... With the with the document purporting to actually appoint a new returning officer and of course uh, this brought about contestation on how exactly did this happen and uh, in Karachuonyo which is uh, in this particular constituency we are told that uh, the local party chairperson actually uh, overhauled the whole uh, elections, uh, elections uh, board uh, that is uh, by single-handedly appointing uh, presiding officers and uh, even polling clerks uh, for that matter, and of course uh, candidates uh, raised eyebrows, or rather this raised eyebrows among the aspirants uh, here in Karachonyo County, it brought about delays even in the distribution of uh, uh, polling materials, uh, even those individuals who had, uh, uh, who had actually uh, volunteered or ha 
had their, their vehicles ready to transport the material. Some of them started pulling out uh, or pulling off, uh, saying that uh, the whole thing is now mad in a total uh, confusion. So that is the state of affairs here in uh, Homer Bay County. Uh, uh, cutting across various polling stations, uh, 100 and uh, I mean 816 polling stations across uh, uh, Homer Bay County. Most of them yet to kick off the exercise. Even the governor himself is yet to cast his ballot. Uh, we are told that around uh, two or thereabouts, we expect the polling materials here in. Uh, in Mawego Mixed Primary School. Of course, we'll be asking him what he feels about this whole process, the delay that we've, we've witnessed here in Homer Bay County. Does it give him or does it actually inspire confidence in the whole exercise as it were? And if the results were to come the other way, will he be conceding defeat or will he actually uh, respect the results as they were given uh, what we've witnessed here in Homer Bay County? Over to you, Hussein, at the Communication Center. Uh, thank you so much, Samogina, uh, joining us live from uh, Homer Bay County.